Everybody, it's Tyler here at Finger Lakes Regional checking in scene number 1511, Rolling Thunder, and I'm here with Peter, Calla, and Marissa. And we're going to be talking about this uh, awesome robot. Just saw them compete for the first time here. They're looking fantastic. Uh, of course, going through from their intake all the way into their shooter. But you got to check out their climber. It looks really awesome. I know you guys are super proud of it. So we'll talk more about that here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So Peter, we're going to start out. As you're talking about your swerve this year, you got a little bit of 3D printing going on in that. So talk to me about that and then we'll uh, cover your limelight as well. Yeah, so our swerve drive is uh, thrifty bot swerve with uh, our 3D printed covers on here to prevent dust. Um, we use NEOs for the drive and NEO 550s for turning. And uh, we're able to have field-centric and robot-centric control during our match. And uh, that couples in with our limelight system, which we've been able to get to rotate to the target and also we have a, a clamping mechanism, so the robot's rotation locks to the target for whenever we're driving around. So, Kellen, next up we're going to be uh, walking through your uh, cargo scoring, starting out with your intake. Talk to me a little bit more about it. Yeah, so we have an over-the-bumper intake with this CNC'd Lexan pieces on the side. We've gone through a few iterative design processes with that, changing it because of how the balls are made, along with, like, the compliance of them. So we have this, which has our robot's name on it, Turbulence, and that's compliant to allow for the balls to go up through intake without the rollers just rolling on top of them. And as we go through storage, we have two banner sensors within storage. They are optical sensors, and you can see where the balls are for them, and that helps us program ball count and see, so we only hold two balls at max at a time. And then we go through our shooter, which we have our flywheels. So I believe we use Greg Colson's for that. And we have our 3D printed hood, which is adjustable with our servo and potentiometer over here. And I think we wanted to run through it. Yeah, let's show up a couple things, Dan. If I can ask a, a couple things for it too, on your uh, shooter uh, itself, or you're shooting from a low uh, area of your robot, right? So when you're thinking about strategy for that, uh, it's a little bit further back. Have you had any issues in regards to like blocking or anything like that on your robot? Um, I don't think we've had a lot of issues this year. We worked a lot trying to make sure that the crossbars on hang didn't interfere with the shooter, which was a process, but it works. Okay, so we're going to intake right now. Um, and we're, th we see we have two balls in here, and we can adjust the hood. This is our low hub shot that she's going to demonstrate right now. And as you can see, they come out real smooth and uh, mitigated the spin on the balls to hopefully keep them from bouncing out of the hub. Uh, Cal, let me ask you on your uh, shooter here, you got a couple of very large uh, weighted flywheels on it. How did you come up with like how much your weight should be uh, in regards to what your shooter is? Um, we prototyped very early in the season to see what would work with the balls. And we found that these work the best and the weightedness really adds a lot of power to it, which helps us get the high hub shots from decently far away. And Marissa, we're gonna wrap up on your robot talking about your uh, climber. I know you're super proud of uh, what's gone into it. So talk to me about uh, some of the custom features a bit and how it works overall. Yeah, so uh, for our climber, we're going to start from bottom to top. So at the very bottom, we have our winch mechanism, which powers the raising and the lowering of our arms. It's very tucked in our robot for protection, but it's also removable for easy repair and um, fixes. When we were designing the winch, we weren't sure whether we wanted to use a ratchet and pawl or a caliper and disc brake. 
we eventually decided on the Ratch and Paul due to its reliability, and then we built our winch mechanism. Our actual arms are composed of two arms, a static arm and an extending arm. Our extending arm has several features on it that are used to help the arms actuate, including our piston mounts and our um, servo pulley drums. So our pistons are used to actuate the movement of our arms back and forward. We have three positions, starting position where it is now, hanging position, which is at 90 degrees, and lean back position, which is um, both pistons retracted. We also have our servo pulley to pull back the static arm to the extending arm when we are hanging so that we can continue to go from medium to high and then high to traverse, which we are currently working on programming. Up at the top, we have our constant force springs, which pull the two stages of the telescoping arm together. And of course, we have our custom 3D printed hooks for our extending arm. Looking at your uh, climber uh, here, what was kind of from a priority standpoint, uh, was is the traversal climb, was that like a need to have? Like you know that that's something you really want to go for this year? Our team always makes a mind map of what we want to get accomplished during at the beginning of every season. This year, our traversal climb was at a need to have on our mind map for our hangar mechanism. So we're currently, um, we're currently at the mid bar hang and we are working on programming for a high bar and traverse high bar for our next competition and traverse if we make it to championships. Well 1511 Rolling Thunder, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot. Looking Thank really you. great on the field and can't wait to see how you do this competition. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Striker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.